So you may recognize this logo from the fine folks over at the uh, Shenzhen Palkiti Network Technology Company Limited. We've got their new X8 handheld. Don't mind their logo, but I hate their stupid Pal Kitty name. But that's beside the point. So this X28, we got right here. And, you know, typical Pal Kitty uh, quality. I mean, it's not really much to look at, but that doesn't always mean anything because sometimes they do make some decent products. They don't always use the best, like, quality plastics and molds for their uh, shells and whatnot. And this one, yeah, the, the, it kind of is okay. Cheapy plastic, cheap looking buttons where like the paint looks like it's going to, you know, scrape off of the buttons here. We got some ports up the top, HDMI, USB-C for charging and a micro SD card slot. So go game geek. They sent this to me for purpose of review. It didn't come with any games. I don't think anybody's really selling this one with games. But the one thing is, is that this comes with Happy Chick. Stupid name too, but Happy Chick is a program that you just kind of, it's like a, like the Play Store, but you download ROMs. You just look for ROMs, click them, download them, and you can play them through the app. Happy Chick is not great in my opinion, but for somebody who really doesn't want to tinker or do anything else, it's an option. Like, you don't have to go looking for ROMs. Just go on Happy Chick and select the games that you want, and it downloads it. But there can be some issues with that as well. Right now, I'm playing a... Uh, well, that's a little loud. The, the, the speakers are pretty decent on this thing. I'm playing uh, some Ghosts of Sparta, some God of War here, uh, PSP. And this plays exceptionally well uh, on this device. This, this device shouldn't have too much of an issue playing PSP, Dreamcast, um, a decent amount of GameCube, and stuff like that. Today I just want to focus on this thing out of the box, what you could do with it, taking a look. But it is pretty impressive that PSP is looking so good and playing well. But let me go ahead and like exit out of there. So this is an Android device. So specs-wise on this thing, I do have the uh, website pulled up. Uh, this thing is powered by a, uh, you know, it's Android 11. It's got 64 gigabytes built in, 5,000 milliamp hour battery, uh, T618 processor. It's eight cores, uh, DDR4 uh, RAM, four gigabytes, which is not going to be much, but you should be able to get, you know, away with playing a decent amount of stuff here. So let's take a look at how this thing ships. Okay, just in my camera a bit so you can see the screen better here. But this is this is what shows up once you boot the system up. It's got a touch screen. You know, you can go to tools, you can go to entertainment, your apps. And there are a few things installed, RetroArch, some emulators and whatnot. Then you can go to settings and, you know, fiddle around to your heart's content. Go into games, they had a you know PSP emulator installed and then a happy chick. So with Happy Chick, typically you'll be greeted to a screen like this where there's some kind of stupid wallpaper. You could search for games back there. And if you scroll, you'll start to see they have like Android based games and all sorts of stuff that you could download. If you go to category, this is where you'll find like, hey, I'm looking for PSP games or Dreamcast games. Select Dreamcast. You could scroll through. You just click get. Like, say I wanted Crazy Taxi, I would click Get, wait for that to load, then just click Download. I mean, I've used Happy Chick plenty of times before. Uh, you can make do with it if it's all you got and you don't want to set up, you know, emulators and whatnot. But it does, like, wind up still having issues. So, say I click Play down there, then I have these games I want to play. Say, I, okay, I, I've downloaded Soul Calibur, I want to play a Dreamcast game. It doesn't... It doesn't load it. I don't know why, but there's been a few. That's when you first boot up Happy Chick. You got to wait for the skip screen to go. Uh, I've had other games too, like Mario Kart, like any Nintendo 64 game. A lot of times, Happy Chick, it'll be like you want to play sing, you know, click single or archive. So like select your save state or something like that. But same thing happens with uh, Nintendo 64. So I, I don't, I'm not like a Happy Chick expert, but it seems like it's not hooking to the emulator or the emulator is not installed properly. But if I go to my apps, go to RetroArch, 
load a like Dreamcast as an example. Uh, load the game that I want to play. And this plays Dreamcast games excellently well, but I think uh, my point more is is uh, if you're fine with Happy Chick, I guess I wouldn't be fine with it. I just don't like it, but um, I would much prefer to set up, you know, RetroArch with ROMs and whatnot. Let me go ahead and find another game. And Happy Chick, a lot of times it looks like it's just downloading the uh, the Japanese version of a lot of these games. So if you really want to get things set up the way you want, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to figure things out and tinker. But, I mean, this is all just stuff I downloaded off the Happy Chick, loaded up through RetroArch, which was already installed on here. But Dreamcast is going to play pretty well on this thing. Like, really well? But just keep in mind, this thing does not ship with ROMs. It just ships with a, a way to download ROMs. Nintendo 64... And see some of this crap like you gotta you gotta watch an ad or you gotta wait. Same thing like Happy Chick or any of these installed things that they have on here. You ain't sitting around watching ads. It resumed my game. I was testing this out earlier. Nintendo 64 seems to to run very well, but you'll you'll still have the typical glitches depending on the uh, emulator you're using. But they do have the Google Play Store um, installed on this. Uh, but it'll have the, the Google Play Store available. Plenty of other ways to download things if you want. But I, I think this device, it's okay. It's got some butt cheeks on the back. It's not the worst, like, build quality. It does seem to be nice, and it's decently powerful. But just keep your expectations in check. You're not going to be playing, like, PS3. You're not going to be, you know... There might be a few things here and there, like very low demanding games that you could play with some systems, but, uh, you know, like indie games or, you know, PlayStation Network, you know, like those, those games that didn't really take full, uh, you know, advantage of the system's power type of thing. But you're going to be able to do a decent amount of stuff with this, but the initial setup of what you're getting out of the box isn't great, isn't great room for improvement if you want to mess around with it. But there you go. Thanks for watching. Bye.